Hey everyone, this is the plan for the week. I'll start with the assumption and how I will act, and then I will back into a few details about this specific week. Until the market shows me that it's tapped out, the main indices, the S&P, that's the SPY, and the QQQ, which is the NASDAQ, my assumption is that they will make, make another high. Now, I can still short those on spikes, and they have been working, but the way I would short is by selling credit call spreads. Buying puts and holding is difficult. It can work, but you need to know how to uh, space the time with diagonals or calendars. Reach out if you need details on those, and I'll try to share a few as well. I will be more of a trader, not an investor. So if I'm loving the idea of owning Microsoft stock, for example, not to pick on one excellent company, this is not the time to load up. I can get engaged with a few shares, but definitely not more than 20% from myself. This is my own uh, opinion. Now let's talk specifically about this uh, chart. This is the S&P, the SPY. Friday was extremely bullish in the morning and very disappointing for the bulls in the afternoon. Here is the look of the QQQ, which looks the same. Now the arrow was there before the day started. We do have supports and they are holding so far. Here I am switched over to the IWM. This is the small caps, a basket of 2000 stocks, uh, which has rebalanced on Friday. And uh, we do still have the purple lines we're dealing with. They are, they have been pivotal for the last few months. Therefore we're stuck in them. 203, 205, 208, 211. These are numbers that you should remember. And let's see if this week is the week where the IWM can break out. It has about 15 to 18% rally if it can do that. And if it could time it when the S&P is also breaking out, then the, the bulls will completely obliterate the bears. Until that happens, the IWM is kind of a lead balloon on, quote, the market. As far as catalysts this week, we do have a jobs number on Friday. And I believe we have ADP in the middle of the week and maybe a few Fed heads talking and a bunch of economic reports. To me, all of that is noise. It will create emotional responses. So I will ignore these and I continue trading knowing the facts. And you know where you can get facts? From inside the company reports. The companies are telling us they've never done better, at least the large ones. Now that's Wall Street. Main Street, completely different idea. If you talk to mom and pop operators, they're struggling, they're struggling to find workers. The sales are not that great. There's some sort of a slowdown. Now, everybody's saying they're crimping on spending. Uh, not very obvious. Consumer spending is still at an all-time high, uh, or at least at a high, and debt is pretty high, even though in, um, the interest rates are higher. Now, this is where it gets tricky. It, the market doesn't seem to be worried about rate cuts, so it's strange to see them react to rate cut headlines. Um, Technically, I don't think we should get a cut. What? We can't justify it. In the past, the cuts came from when we needed uh, stimulus. And right now, we don't have a problem. The S&P is at an all-time high. The NASDAQ is at an all-time high. The country is fully employed. Economic conditions are not disastrous. We still have a stimulus from COVID going on for another few years. So the um, Federal Reserve will really have to justify cutting rates under these conditions. I don't think they can convince most politicians. Um, it's just common sense. I would enjoy some lower rates if I wanted to buy something, but I think that would just have inflation uh, reignite or linger a lot longer than it needs to. Anyway, let's trade the stock market the way we see it. I'm not gonna fight it. I will tactically trade it on the short side. I have caught a few uh, dips. There are a few stocks inside uh, levels that are attractive, Nike, for example. But even then, they have to act within the whole market if it has a little hiccup. Be safe and be more of a tactical trader rather than a full-blown investor at these levels.